Welcome to the official podcast of the National Pickleball League, where we go inside the NPL. Welcome to Everything and the Kitchen Dink. My name is Michael Hammer Mike Chen, and I'm going to be the moderator of today's podcast. But I'd like you to introduce you my co host, Rick Ripskin Witskin, David the Professor George, and Jen Bonecrusher Galwas. Welcome, everyone. Great to be here, Mike. So I would love to just talk on this podcast about this weekend that we just finished uh, this past weekend in Texas at Chicken and Pickle Grapevine, Texas. What a weekend, Rick. 104 participants, two days. You know, thank you, the Gamma, for being the official ball of the National Pickleball League. Thank you for Chicken and Pickle for, again, doing an amazing job being the venue for our combine this year. Um, it was just so exciting. And before we get into it, I just want to, first of all, congratulate the four combine winners. Boy, it was an incredible uh, week. But the four combine winners, the two male winners were Eric Lee from Newcastle, Washington, and Tony Hong from Crystal City, Missouri. And then on the women's side, Leslie Ballard from Portland, Oregon, and Stacey Zelensky of Morro Bay, California. Rick, what a, I, I can't, I'm still catching my breath. What do you think, Rick, about this weekend, huh? Well, I think the NPL is the gift that keeps on giving because we obviously gave out four guaranteed draft positions. I know they're ecstatic about it, but to be back at the chicken and pickle where this all started in 2023, to know it's kind of our last hurrah with them, at least for this year, um, I was really proud of Laura Kemp and her staff. They're at Dallas Grapevine, awesome facility. The players were blown away. And quite frankly, it still surprises me, Michael, with the number of participants that hadn't been to a chicken and pickle until they experienced an NPL event. Yeah, no, that was awesome. And David and Jen, you remember the first time we had our combine, our first combine last year was at chicken pickle. It was at Oklahoma City, right? Mm -hmm. And think about it. Didn't, it wasn't the experience of chicken pickle just absolutely outstanding. I had never experienced anything like that. I drove all the way from the Chicago area to get there, and I was just blown away by the facility. I'd never really seen anything like that. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. It's like Disneyland for adults. I mean, there's the pickle, and then there's, like, people were playing Connect Four on the lawn, and there's, like, this, you know, whole area and music and food, and it's yeah. just like it's just like a party. It's so it, it, that's what you said. It was a big party for a whole weekend. Yeah. That's what it felt like. I was so excited to go for three days there. And it started off, as you know, the combine Friday was just a practice day. You just got to go out there and play and get to meet the players. All the combine players were welcome to play on Friday. I got to play a little bit of the combine players on Friday. And then the combine started on Saturday and Sunday. And Rick, what was exciting about it too, right, is we saw a lot of our NPL players, not a lot, but a, a bunch of them that played in it. And I'm like, you know, interesting to see how they would do this weekend with the new shiny toys and <laughs> Our NPL players actually did really well, right, this weekend, you know? They sure did. It was so neat to see, A, some of the former players playing in the combine, and then, B, some of our players from last year coming to just support the event, even though they're contracted players into this year. So, you know, it makes me feel like on Friday nights, we have to start every Friday night party off with, we are family. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give a shout out. To, and if I forgot something, uh, remind me. But uh, NPL players that played, uh, Vivek Talian, right? He did amazing. Yeah. Uh, Eric Alvarado, who has a guaranteed spot because he won a pre-combine at Boca. He was there and he did very well. Roseanne Heim uh, did very well as well. Mary Beth Henthorn, incredible. Those were four outstanding players that, that played in a combine. Daniel Gold coming off knee surgery actually did very well as well, right? So all five of them and uh, did incredibly well. Um, in the combine all I think all four of the five actually made it to the final two pods on Sunday. Wow. Did that surprise awesome. you? Did that surprise you Rick or David or George that those four or five people actually, you know, came up top of the list in the combine. You can Absolutely say something about not. Daniel go. No, didn't surprise you. Daniel. Da well, da yeah, go ahead. I mean, you know, the fact is Mary Beth Hendorn was an Andy driver on the, championship any driver so <laughs> that didn't surprise me at all uh, you know daniel gold on boca i'm proud of him he's got the best sense of humor out of anybody in the npl i loved uh hanging out with daniel some so that was um and then roseanne and obviously uh, gerald we gave 
a nice interview with them. It was super, um, super fun to reminisce with them about last year. All right, Michael, who had the over under um, on when Rick would mention the world champion indie drivers in this podcast? I had five minutes and he went under. Yeah, you're right. He, he couldn't help himself, but you know, you got to give it to Rick. He's going to mention, he's going to mention indie drivers for the next 20 years, every year. Like who was the first inaugural champion? It's, you know, unfortunately, it's we got to give that to him. We I'm not sure him. what that's like. No one ever brings up who won the first combine. So I don't know why he would uh, bring up who won the first championship. Well, yeah. it's okay. The jealousy runs thick in the NPL because there's too many people that are really high quality people where that won't be the issue most of the time. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the combine uh, players. We'll, we'll talk about the winners later, but Vivek Talian, right? He was uh, like uh, the guy Brunson from, from Florida. Jim like, Brunson. Uh, Jim Brunson was low profile, wasn't anything yeah. special, and he won the combine. Vivek is the same way. He didn't do anything special. He just doesn't miss, waited for the, the attack, and he counterattacked. He went 7-0. and He was the only 7-0 wow. winner on Saturday. And then he was very competitive on Sunday as well in the top pod. So very impressive performance by him, you know, and, and very pr- impressive performance by all the players who all they want to do was not make errors. I, mm-hmm. I, that's what I saw. A lot of the winners were not the ones with the flashiest shot or the biggest drive, but the ones that just didn't make errors, right, Rick? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they were a wealthy man's version of David George, those guys, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wealthy man's true that, that's i'm gonna use that that's actually pretty good yeah you know, you know jim, <laughs> jim bronson drove and met us and we all met last wednesday and played because my little you know pro mixed age partner is playing with him and so he doesn't miss i think he missed less than david that night what you agree <laughs> <laughs> well the, the first combine i mean john and i hedberg really had contrasting styles He's waiting for a half inch and he's speeding up and I'm waiting until like three feet of opening before I speed up. So like last year, we really had the yin and yang of uh, pickleball. And I'm glad to see us consistent folk are represented by Viv and uh, Jim. You know, and I got to give a shout out to four of the players that stepped in when people got hurt that played in our NPL, uh, Helen Wilhelm, uh, for sure. And her husband, uh, Kim, also stepped in as well. Tian Nguyen and, and uh, Moira Rush and Chris Montgomery. They were there mainly uh, to enjoy themselves and, and, and watch. And they, we said, hey, someone got hurt. You know, we need this pod needs you to step in. They all stepped in just like Vinay stepped nice. in in, uh, in in Florida. It was give a shout out for them. Give a shout out also to John Hedberg. Yeah. And Hugh Zhang, yeah, the owner, stepped in as well. Thank you, Rick. Uh, he was scouting all of a sudden. He had it. <laughs> jump in as well so we had a lot of injuries we had a bunch of injuries that we had that. you know five or six injuries that we had to uh have people come in thank goodness none of them were serious injuries but they needed to step out and and we had uh our players and hugh zang uh, as our owner uh step in as well and big shout out to scott johnson and john hedberg for being there to help us scout these players and review these players and that that's always helpful as well right rick i mean you really have the consummate way to evaluate talent number one If you're Hugh or Chris, you're playing in the pod with these guys. So what a beautiful way to analyze the the talent level. And then you've got guys that Hedberg and Johnson, who literally are taking notes where they have a grid and they have a system. Like if you have a a numeric five on Scott Johnson's um, grid, you know that you have incredible hand speed. If you have a a number one, you have a dink. If you have a, a, a negative symbol of a star that means you aren't getting drafted right. so <laughs> really, yeah. he's got a nice symbol he's got a complicated I, I i can't wait to have him to send me this and then i can de- decipher his code so what it means well anyway the stay tuned for the draft because the draft reveal party when we're going to reveal the names of people getting drafted will be on april 14th sunday in naples so if you're here for the u.s open in naples the draft will be that Sunday, right before the uh, right when the U.S. Open starts on April fourteenth, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, uh, you know, let's talk about the combine some more. But let's talk with someone that experienced it right this year, not last year, David. Oh. Uh, Le- Leslie Ballard, uh, like I said, from Portland, Oregon, she had in a dramatic last game uh, to win uh, the combine, and so I love to bring That's Leslie awesome. onto our podcast now. 
and uh, have her join us. And I'm so excited. I was able to. Yay, congratulations. Able to, Thank you. Congrats. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. And the Oregon. shiny new toy. Yeah. He's saying <laughs> Oregon. It's Oregon. I, I okay, know. I was going to say that. Oregon. <laughs> Oregon. I mean, he's Sorry. from the East Coast. You know. Obviously. Oh, no. <laughs> Oregon. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but I was excited. I When Leslie won, I watched her last match, which it was a 10 10 tie break. At, and then she won oh, the last wow. point to go 11 10. And I would try to get on the podium, but. She had to take a break and get a celebratory drink. And I was able to get a celebratory <laughs> drink with her. So we were a little bit That's late right. on the metal stand, but we were able to celebrate with a drink, Leslie. And first of all, welcome to our show. Everything Thank in the you. Kitchen Dink, where we go inside the NPO. I just want to say, first of all, welcome and congratulations, Leslie. Thank you very much. Thanks for yeah, having me. That's awesome. Sure. Love to just tell me about, did you, when did you decide to come to Come Mine? And you had mentioned to me that you almost didn't make it, right? Yeah. Well, I had a friend that sent me a link a couple months ago. I was like, you should do this. And I was like, I don't, I don't even know about that tournament. I don't know what you're talking about. And I kind of <laughs> disregarded it. And then later I looked at it, looked it up and was like, well, that looks pretty fun. I should do it. So um, I just signed up and decided to go. And was it worth it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, assuming you didn't win, would it have been worth it anyway? Oh, a hundred percent. It was so far off my radar winning. That was not the reason why I came. It was just to challenge myself and meet new people and see where I stand, you know, with people across the country. So, um, even at the very end, I had no idea that I was in the running to win. So, which was probably a good thing. And did you meet a lot of new people and what was the funnest other than winning the championship, uh, winning the, <laughs> the championship, what was the most fun part of the weekend? I think for sure, just meeting all of these amazing women and getting to play with them. And my Facebook has been just blowing up since I've gotten home with messages from people and, you know, connecting. And so I, that for sure was, was amazing. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, Leslie, I read your Facebook post and it was a really awesome post. And it's so ironic to me, the mental side of the game that I really believe that you didn't know if you're winning and clearly the, the vibe of just playing in your pod, meeting these women going along, but you know, sometimes it helps you win when your focal point isn't winning. And yes. I felt like you were pretty uh, cool as a cucumber going through that. And even at the 10 all point, um, it's really fun to see your your mental game be more stable than the hammer Michael Chen. So good job. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think that's true. I had no I really had no idea that that match was to, to win it. So that was probably what? good. Was it different? And did you like playing win by one? See, in the NPL, there's no win by two. It's 10-10. You win by one. Did that feel different? Did you like that win by one kind of mentality? Yeah, it felt different for sure. Yeah, I think I did. That's, no, that's, that's exciting. And and so who would you say you gave you some of your toughest competition? Name a couple of people that you were like, wow, you guys got to put eyes on, on these people on the NPL oh, as well. Sure. That's going to be tough. I don't remember names very well, but um, was it Henthorn was in? Yep. Yep. She Henthorn. was in my. Yeah. Oh, Mary, Beth. Beth. Mary Beth. Mary Beth. She's yeah. awesome. Mary Beth. Um, we love Mary Beth. Oh my gosh. Beth. Uh, she's I mean, so was, fun. Yeah. She yeah. was fun and just hits the ball so pretty and, um, and just was a blast to play with. So I think she was um, just stood out in our pod, but oh my gosh, there's so many women that I just uh, looked up to and admired their game for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, Mary Beth played in our league last year and she was one of the players that came back and just said, I want to do it again. So it was it was exciting to see her there. That was awesome. Yeah, and she just looks like she's having fun out there, which is mm -hmm. just awesome. Did you, by the way, on Friday, what was your thought about playing on Friday, just relaxing, meeting people and playing some practice matches and, and the dinner Friday night? Any thoughts about that piece, the, the pre-combine uh, event? Yeah, I thought that was perfect. It just, um, like, first of all, just walking in, I was, again, we talked, you talked about this earlier that I had never been to a chicken and pickle. So um, I was blown away. We walked in and, you know, somebody greeted us and gave us a little swag bag. And so you just felt special from the beginning. Um, and then just getting out there and uh, playing and kind of just getting the, you know, the jitters out was, I think, really, really helpful. Um, Leslie, you have um, a couple pros that I'm really close to from your home state, and that would be Stefan Andren and Wes Gabrielson. Have one of those players had an impact on you? Oh, my gosh, yes. Wes, in particular, I take lessons from him. 
And um, he is just such a huge legend in our Portland community. And, um, but he's always the one, if he notices I have a good match or he sees a tournament result, he's always the first to text me and congratulate me. And um, I mean, he really is a special person. And then oh. Stefan plays at the same, we play in the same um, courts and he's always just lovely and, and great to, to watch. And there's another person from your area, Reagan Ferguson, who yes. is a super senior and she's going to be my U S open and my New York city partner. So she told me she's excited to see you in. So Reagan. Yeah. Reagan's a super, great. Super one. Yeah. She's yeah. Nice. Look at that. Like, who would have thought someone from Connecticut would be playing with someone from Oregon. Okay. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Good job, Michael. In the U S <laughs> open uh, and New York city. So, uh, she's going to come my way to, to New York uh, to experience the Northeast, but I'm looking forward to playing with. So a lot of talented people out yeah, there, Reagan, sure. Wes, you know, Stefan. Stefan played on the Boca Raton Picklers last year. He was a great coach, great leader of our Boca Raton Picklers team. So, so thrilled that he, he's coming back this year, right? Everyone's great. Yeah, so. yeah, he's a great player. I noticed you used the phrase lovely. So you have the indie drivers lingo down. I just talked to uh, Chad <laughs> Flynn uh, this morning. Um, but Leslie, did you have a chance to meet any owners in particular that you connected with? I won't ask you who you want to be picked by, <laughs> but did you have a chance to connect with a few of the owners? Because that first weekend I connected with a few of the owners and they're still some of my best friends from that weekend over a year ago. Yeah. Um, I thought everyone was amazing and friendly and, um, came up and chatted. So I, um, I love Kim from Coachella. She's, um, yeah. We have some common connections, so that was fun chatting with her and um, love to see a, a, a gal owner, which was great. So, Yeah, we got her. We have uh, Carol, Carol Rolls from OKC, yeah. and we have Julie Gibson, who's uh, partners with uh, Daryl as a co-owner in, in Kansas City as well. So, uh, And as well as in Princeton, we have a group Princeton. of owners, and Karen, yeah, yeah Pesora is, is uh, also an owner. So we have a I'm excited about that is we have yeah. a bunch of uh, women owners uh, and, in this and league. Paul and Amias. Yeah, correct. In any as well as, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Amy, Susan. Amy Bloom Rosen, Houston. Yes, that's right. Oh. We can keep counting. Susan, <laughs> Susan and, and Nancy out of Boca. Right. So we have. Wow. We're, we're adding and there. There's probably half half of the 12 teams uh, have, have 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 women owners, which is really, really exciting. And as you know, Leslie, what we're trying to do in this league is you know, we uh, have 50 percent are women, 50 percent of men. And also the, the prize money is 50 percent women, 50 percent men. Like everything is is equal. Mm -hmm. And that's we're really focused on that. Um, and also the appearance fees we pay our top pros is is equal as well. So that's the great. goal is to recognize all the star athletes uh, regardless of gender. As long as you're over a champion pro over the age of 50, you qualify. That's awesome. So, that's the one criteria. No, no young people, unfortunately, in this league. You know, we leave that for the for the we're other. Young. We're still people. young. I know you're right. That's you're right. right. Thank you, Jen, for reminding us. So, <laughs> well, with anything else, uh, Leslie, you want to say um, about the combine? Uh, no, just that it was just such an amazing experience, and I also liked at the dinner that you guys talked about. You know, that it wasn't just about the score; it was about you know how we treat each other how, you know, how much fun we're having, our sportsmanship and all that stuff really matters. And it's just a great reminder. Hey, Rick, did you feel that way this weekend? I was watching and there was a lot of calls where they would all be called out and, and the other team would say it was really out and then they would just give it to the other team when they weren't sure. And there was a lot of balls that were out that they played even though it was out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that was like two inches out. They played it. I didn't see one squabble about out and in when there was oh, a question so about nice. it. It was just like, yeah, okay, why don't you take it? Like, we're, we're not 100% sure. It was it was amazing, Rick, the sportsmanship. And every match at the end, people were hugging, you know, and, and shaking hands. And and it was just felt like they weren't even competing at all, which they were. But they it felt like much more of a family, just like brothers and sisters competing against each other. Every combine has had that feel. And I want to give uh, major credit to the owners because I think they exude that level of class and in their structure of how they determine who's on their team. And I think players understand that, that it is absolutely more about winning than winning and losing. So proud of the owners for their perspective. 
That's great. It felt to me a lot like summer camp, you know, when you're a yes. kid and yeah. you, you come to something for a short period of time and you just feel like you have these lifelong friends and there's not very many opportunities. I feel like in life that, that you create such bonds so quickly. Yeah, we call this adult playland is what we call yeah, it, Leslie. I see why. I see why. <laughs> and, and Leslie, it even gets more fun because then when like you were just everybody, but once you know you're in and you're on a team and now you're so bonded and then you you leave and you're texting each other and you have fun group. Te- you know, I have like a workout yeah. chat with like four other people and then the girls and I, and then you just can't wait to get back. You're like, oh, three more weeks till we go to this location. So it's it's just, it made, it's just to have things to look forward to, to have things yeah. that you're working towards, your fitness. And, you know, we're all, we're all athletes. It's just fun to compete again you know, at this age. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been, it's been great. And, and you being a combine winner, you know, is guaranteed a draft spot. Yeah. Yeah. Relax. You can sit back and relax. That's nice. You you just got to figure out who team drafts you, but you're guaranteed a draft spot. You're guaranteed. It's a win-win. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I'm excited. And and by the way, I, I I know why your uh, Facebook is blowing up. It's because everyone wants to be your partner. So I know, <laughs> I know like they're, they're all texting like, Leslie, you want to play in this tournament with me? Leslie, you want to play in this tournament with me? And you know? yes, I do all of them. They're all just so good. So I would so say yes to Les- anyone. Leslie, one last question for you. So knowing that, you know, the four of us have a good chance of being drafted, Michael, Jen, David, and I, um, whose oh, team would you prefer to be on out of the four of us? Well, I'm going to have to say – it's Jen for sure, because this last weekend was girl power all the way. So there you yeah, go. without a doubt. There you go. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, no, good Thanks, answer. Leslie. <laughs> Watch That's us be good. teammates. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer, Leslie. But I'm number two, right? Because we shared a sure. celebratory drink, right? See, there absolutely, you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Dave. All right. Well, listen, Leslie, thank you so much for yeah. your time today. Congratulations again. Yeah, it's awesome. And we so look forward to seeing you at, at the MPL uh, this coming year. And uh, it starts with the party in April. If you can make it in the U.S. Open, great. But otherwise, we'll see you in May in Chicago in our first event. Yeah, Chicago. All right. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, so much. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, Leslie. Bye-bye, Leslie. Well, that was a great interview, wasn't that, huh? That was oh, she's, exciting. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome, huh? Just a yeah. lot of energy, uh, real talented and, and exciting. And uh, let's now – bring up our next guest and uh our next guest was um it is it, three three parts interesting first of all he's an owner uh Darryl Wyatt um Darryl Wyatt is not only the uh co-owner of the Kansas City Stingers but uh he is also the uh, a player in the combine he played in the Florida combine uh and he can tell us a little bit about that experience and then this weekend his responsibility was to scout so he was scouting all the players. So without further ado, welcome, Daryl, to the MPL's uh, Everything in the Kitchen Dink Yay! podcast. Hi, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. How's er- How is everybody? <laughs> Great now. Great. Love, I'm glad you're on. Awesome. Thank you. So you know, I just have to say something about Daryl. He had an awesome interview um, on the video with um, Carl Show and – you know, inside the world pickleball. And I just am so happy, Daryl, that you and Julie have quickly and effectively captivated the market of Kansas City. I'm hearing that from a lot of different places, not just you two, but hearing that from other people I know from Kansas City. Wow, you guys were the last team chosen for our league this year, and you've kind of taken the world by storm. I'm really proud of your your launch into our League, so thank you for believing in us, Dara. I know I've talked to you a lot and trying to get you into that last spot, and I've grown yeah. in affection with you because we will forever share that bond. But yeah, great yeah. job getting getting the media. What are you What are you doing, Michael? Why are you shaking your head? No, I'm I'm <laughs> not. I'm agreeing with you on that. I agree 100, percent Rick, because they were actually on the wait list, as you know. Like we couldn't get Kansas City in, and Rick, you told me like, is there any way we can get Kansas City in? And we're trying and trying, and they we're on the wait list, and Something happened where we had a team kind of like fall out off at the last second, and we moved Carol to the top of the wait list, right? Yeah. And we got we got Daryl and and, um, and Julie, Julie uh, and, and Kansas City like number one. So uh, it was, and it's meant to be because you've gotten a lot of publicity, Daryl, uh, yeah. at Kansas City. So congratulations on that. But you know, let's spend it's a WD-19. different podcast. <laughs> let's spend Thank a you. different podcast 
about Kansas City and Darren Julie because I think there's a whole feature podcast on on your team and your story in Kansas City and what you've taken that community by storm. But yeah. for now, let's talk about really <laughs> your experience as a player in the combine and then your experience. Okay. As so uh, just quickly uh, tell me about um, your experience in in the combine in Florida that happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, first, let me just thank because. De- Jennifer and David, um, <laughs> they kind of spoke so highly of MPL, and that kind of got the ball really rolling. Um, we saw them at our club in Kansas City, so I appreciate you guys, you know, and all of your your kind of connection to get this ball rolling. So I really am thankful for that. Um, as as far as a player, you know, it was interesting being an owner and a player because many of the players. Um, that I played with or and against did not know that I was an owner per se. So it was it was it was a it was a, uni- it was a unique perspective to, to hear their thoughts while we were playing and to hear how whether they were nervous or whether they weren't nervous. So then that gave, gives you a little bit of insight. But it was great seeing um, and being on and really being able to test how how I would do, but more more importantly, how the what the level of play was. So it was it was a really great experience. That's great. And then how contrast that with you not being able to play for two days and instead you had to watch and take notes and study 104 players. What were your thoughts about that? Right. See, that was tougher. That was tougher because uh-huh. the whole time you want to jump out there and play. But then you don't and then you don't get the inside of the little the little uh the little whispers and the little conferences on the court. So then you got to really rely on and try to read people a little bit more than you, than I did when I was playing, but it was great seeing and actually being able to, to kind of see the difference in game styles and the difference in even whether it was from Florida, even the little half, the half of the days that I got to watch in Florida when I wasn't playing, but then to see a full day and see really the effect that it took on the, the toll that it took on the players and how they were geared and just to hear the the talk how they spoke to us as owners it was it was really insightful. Yeah, I have a question for you. For, um, we're so excited that Kansas City and yourself and Julie are in the NPL. Um, is there a type, a style? What are you looking for in a player? Whether you're going undercover boss like the first weekend or whether you're just evaluating (laughs) like uh, on the second weekend, is there something you're looking for in a player besides just the ability? Really what we're, what I'm looking for really is, is that steady player, the player who there are not a lot of ups and downs. There's not a lot and much like the, which proved to be the winners, you know, in the end, those guys that maybe didn't have the biggest game, but, you knew what you were going to get. You knew that they were going to bring their A game all the time. They were going to be competing all the time, whether sometimes they had the the bigger drives or the or the most powerful shot, but you knew they were going to be there. And you knew that when that crunch point came, that 10-all point, you knew there weren't there wasn't going to be that unforced error. They were going to play smart and 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 get the job and make you beat them. That's what I think that's what um and it actually proved proved with all the winners for those week for both combines actually. Right, right. Isn't that interesting? That the winners of the combines, all eight, I would say, weren't very flashy. You know, right. some were some you just didn't even expect to make it in the into the final round, and they won the whole thing. Right? It tells you Isn't something, that, there, right? Abs- don't have to be, absolutely. Don't. Yeah, absolutely. Exciting. So it's like David George. Nobody thought he was going to win it. And people thought it was a professor. He was like, like nobody paid attention to him. All of a sudden, he came out of the woodwork because he did exactly that. He didn't miss. And like, who's this guy, this professor's brainy guy that won the combine? He did exactly that. So, David, you got a shot of being drafted by the Kansas City Stingers, just so you know. Oh, and like, uh, oh, did I tell you that number nine is my favorite number? And my second favorite number is number 16, in case you're wondering. <laughs> that, that's it. 16 is my favorite number. You can't have two. <laughs> See, that's a pair right there. That's it. <laughs> oh, you got a shot. I play with but, him all the time. <laughs> but by the way, but Daryl, Daryl Jen is not like that. She's got power over there. That's why they call it Bone Crusher Galwas. I'm afraid of it. She hits that ball. Mean, mean ball. I've never, I promise I've never hit him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, listen, let's stop this. So, Daryl, Daryl, listen, you know winners. 
That's why you visited the University of Alabama. And <laughs> we did have selection Sunday, and I saw Alabama was one of the top 16 teams. I don't think Michigan was selected at all, but <laughs> that's, that's a side point. Hey, yeah, but who was, was one of the number one seeds? You mean, Tar Heels, University Tar of North Carolina. Yeah, that's your school. <laughs> Go Heels. Yes, absolutely. You mean a national <laughs> champion, Michigan Wolverines. Is that what you're talking about, Rick, that team? The world champion. basketball Mich season. Uh -huh. but, yeah, yeah. That's a way <laughs> over, Mike. Illinois. A... Illinois. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stick, stick, sticking with Daryl. Daryl is a lefty. And I just want you to know, Daryl, I think being a lefty is, is a nice advantage yeah. to have that. I yeah. left me as a partner. I'm playing with Scott Crandall this week, weekend in Miami as a lefty, and I really like the structure of that. So obviously you can have a lot of great choices when it comes to you at number nine or 16. Um, some Someone has really wanted that little lower pick to come back and get a really mm -hmm. high level 14, 15, 16, 17 pick. Um, do, right. Is that kind of nine where you wanted to go? And will you be favoring any lefties over righties or what's your perspective? You know, uh, I, you know, always that number one pick is alluring, but looking at it and talking about it, and, and we talked about it the night before, Julie and I talked about it the night before, and we were talking that if we had gotten one of the wild cards, we toyed around with, did we want the 12th pick to get that 12th and 13th wow. pick? Because that's so, those two back to back picks, when you think the one gets the first and the 24th pick, so to speak, you know, and that's a little bit that 12th and 13 would be great. So we're happy um, with that ninth pick, that ninth and the 16th. So because then we can get it. It's it's like the players who who won the combines. You just get a solid, solid team that maybe doesn't have the, the one pick or the, you know, but you have a solid team and that's going to be something to contend with over the course of the season. Yeah. No, that's a great point. You want the, the, the people that are sleepers. And uh, just going back to the combine for one second, like I was watching the women more than the men this combine because I thought I knew who was going to win the men. And I wasn't sure who was going to win the women. But when I watched the women play, I saw Leslie and Stacy were two of the top women. So I wasn't that surprised when they ended up winning. But what shocked me was Eric Lee and Tony Wong winning it. I didn't have my focus on them. And I did, actually didn't see a lot of them playing because I had a few other guys I was going to predict to win. And all of a sudden I hear that they won. Did you feel the same way? Or did you know that kind of Eric and Tony were the favorites on the men's side? Because I was totally shocked mm -hmm. that those two won. No, I was 100% shocked. I, I was, I'm like you, I was yeah. looking at a couple other guys yeah. um, who I thought would come through that, come through that bracket and, uh, or those two pods and, it was pleasant. Just a testament to that solid, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, and, and those guys, it was really, uh, it was a pleasant surprise to see those guys come through because there were some guys in the final two pods that had some huge games, yeah, some really yeah. big games. And, and it would just, at first glance, you would think those guys would come through, but it was nice to see. And, you know, Tony, um, we're hosting a combine this weekend here in Kansas city and Tony's actually, well, He's scheduled to come out. I don't know if he will. <laughs> he's a celebrity now. Now he's a big celebrity. <laughs> he's a celebrity. Yeah, big time. I don't, I don't know if his, uh, if his schedule <laughs> will allow that now. But um, He's but, traveling to no. New York City on a Today Show, I think, scheduled <laughs> right. tomorrow. Right, ex 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 exactly. Um, but I think that it was. it's really nice to see, and it, and it gives, you know, it gives everyone that hope that, you know, just to work hard, be steady, and it kind of it's kind of what pickleball is. It kind of showed exactly what pickleball is, in my estimation. Well, and I will say that the combine this year was different than last year. Because last year, like, I could tell David George and Hedberg were, were the guys that I thought going into the final day that were going to shine. And they did. So I do think it was a little different from last well, maybe year. Maybe John, John for sure. John Hedberg, for sure. Thanks for getting that in there, Hammer Mike. <laughs> That's why they call me Hammer. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But uh, but again, but Lara Thornton, right, and and Connie Burnett, I did not expect them to win the combine. They came out of nowhere to win the combine. And I think the record during the regular season last year was tremendous. I think Laura Thorne record was like 20 and 2, right? So prove oh, that wow. that she, even though she wasn't flashy, like she just won, right? And Connie Burnett right. the same way. Not flashy, but they just win. And and winners win. And what it shows you in the combine is you don't have to be flashy. You just got to be steady and you win. It's going to prove true also in the NPL. 
Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Um, I have to give justice to Fort Wayne, Indiana, David, Indiana, Natasha Kyrgy. Oh, she yes. was absolutely. dominant, dominant. She had to leave early, therefore didn't get to play in the championship pod. I'm certain Daryl and Julie saw this Natasha, and I told you, Mike, I'm like, watch out for this Indiana girl because she's going to set it on fire. Yeah, so- I played I played with her in a practice match on Friday, and once I played with her in a practice match Friday, I knew Rick 100% right. Like, she was going to be there, and and she absolutely was there. And and uh, just before we close it out, I want each of you to give – well, you can't, Jen and D- David, since you weren't there at the Combine like some of the other – players but uh, <laughs> I, I will ask rick and and daryl to close it out give me one sleeper pick that didn't end up winning so you can't name the four that won but someone that didn't win that you think will, will should be drafted and will be an excellent player in the npl so each of you I, just one i can't one. narrow it down to one but so give me two so give me two okay then. well on the guy side craig riley i mean okay. he lost by in yep. the last yep. match barely yep. by a couple points to Huang, Craig Riley's going to get drafted. I'm certain of it. He he was very impressive, very talented. I uh, really like what I saw out of him. Um, there was also going to Mike Pizurik, who got to the gold medal match out in California. I think I might have mentioned him last week. But anyway, he's a lefty, and he's a super Great. senior. So I believe he's going to be. But on the women's side, I really like Tracy Palo. She's super athletic and has a great attitude. And then April Prohaska. I was really, really impressed with her and her athleticism. So – um, those are the ones that stood out to me as, as wild cards. So for me, um, on the women's on the women's side, uh, there's a woman from Oregon named her last name is Chang. Um, Renee Renee Chang Renee Renee Renee, Ch- Renee Chang. Renee yeah. Chang. I I, I kind of I really liked her. Um, she was in there and she was a super solid player that you knew what what you would get from her. And I was I was really um I was really I really enjoyed watching her play. And then on the men, there's a guy, He, I think he was in pod three on Sunday, and his name was Rainy, or Re- he's from Utah, Rainy. Rain Akabran. Rain, Rain Akabran. Ak- yep. mm-hmm. I really enjoyed, I think he's a lefty, but I really enjoyed watching him as well, and I think he'll he'll surprise a few people. Oh, he's really good. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, and I'll give you my two. Maggie Merch, she I played oh, with yeah. her. Yep, yep. She, she's tough, you know. She's tough, yep. and she's a yep. silent killer. So I, I, I think she's she's a she's one to watch. Uh, on the men's side, I would say uh, Adam Con. Adam Con, I liked his game. Yeah, Denver. Yeah, yep. So those yep. would be the, the, the two picks I have. So, but there's lots of others I can name. Like, and that's others, but, that's what I was gonna say. There are so many others that 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 were so that are so worthy and they're such solid players that it's hard to just name one. Yep. And, but don't forget that our MPL players, again, that played, I want to give them another shout out. Roseanne Heim and Eric Alvarado and Vic Talian and, and Mary Beth Hanthorn and Daniel gold. They did really well. So, our, yep. so uh, give yep. them kudos for, yeah. for even though playing last year for putting on the line and coming to our combine in Texas. Yeah. Well. Really nice. Great. Well, well, thank you, Daryl. I, I really appreciate it. We're going to have you on the podcast again to tell you the whole Kansas City story with Julie. Uh, it's a great story. Thank you, guys. Thank you again for sharing your story <laughs> as a player and as a scout. Bye, Jen. Bye. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. Thank Bye, you, Daryl. We're so, so excited. excited. For the opportunity. Thank you. See you guys soon. See you, Daryl. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Well, great. That kind of wraps it up. Another great conversation, right, David, Jen, and, and Rick? I'm all excited. I want the season to start next week and the draft to happen like tomorrow. Yes. Like, you know, what? Uh, it's it's so exciting. This year's going to be great. I can't wait for April 14th when we reveal our draft. Uh, Rick, David, Jen, your thoughts? I just, I think the headache you could get as an owner yeah. deciding with a, a 12 uh 12 pick round of what do you go two men and a woman, two women and a man. And I mean, obviously you have to wait till things come off the board, but I think strategy is just so important yeah. how, and based on the position they're in. So but we should have the best that super next- senior. I mean, I, like we were talking to Dave and I were playing this weekend. We're like, yeah. you know, like you said, that's a super, I mean, my gosh, if you could get a Scott Moore or Beth right off the bat, you're getting an incredible player and it count, you know, there's so many yeah. different, 
ways you can look at. Well, we're going to definitely yeah. have to do our next podcast on the strategy of the draft before the draft. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll spend a whole podcast on that for sure. And you might get drafted first. Bob does really like David. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you imagine what everyone would say if I was drafted first in front of all the good players? Oh. I would never hear the end of it. I got a Wait. hard time last year from like being like a fourth or fifth round. This year, like Rick would tease me so no, mercilessly. Mike and Rick, we would never hear the end. <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 David, I have a saying. There's only one thing worse than having no hope. You know what that is, David? Ha I'll tell you what it is. Having hope when there really is none. Oh, man. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about next week. But thank you, David, for uh, being here <laughs> and with your insights. Jen. Bone Crusher, thank you as well. And Rick thank Ripskin you. Whiskin, I can't wait, right? So thank you, Chicken and Pickle. Yes. Thank you. And yeah. thank you, Gamma, for being the Gamma. official ball this year. So thank you, Chicken Pickle and Gamma. And till next time, on behalf of David, the Professor George, Jen Bone Crusher <laughs> Gawas, and Rick Ripskin Whiskin. This is Michael Hammer Mike Chen signing out for everything and the kitchen dink, where we go inside the MPL. Thank you for tuning in to the official podcast of the National Pickleball League. Please stay tuned as we will be back soon with our next episode as we go inside the MPL.